Hi guys, welcome to today's vlog. My name is Mandy Meehan. I am a functional nutritional therapy practitioner. I am healing from chronic illness and I talk about all things health and wellness, faith, lifestyle, all the things on my channel. So my throat's a bit sore today. My voice is a little bit hoarse, um, but I'm just gonna make do because I really have been trying to find time and energy to film this video and I'm just, today's the day, I'm just gonna make it work. I don't necessarily wanna take a ton of time to explain why I'm not able to be on YouTube consistently right now. Really, I'm focusing on my health and the treatment that we're doing right now for my chronic illness. I'm really hopeful about the direction we're heading in. I'm really encouraged and I, in my head, I kind of have a timeline of how I think things could play out based on my plan right now. I, I, I'll share more when I can, but I really do just wanna keep it personal right now. So yeah, right now my focus is really family, my health, my nutritional therapy clients, trying to build up a business while I'm still recovering. So when I'm really starting to get my energy back, I can go really hard. I'm really working on Beauty Counter. That's been absolutely amazing, getting to work with different consultants and uh, just sharing about safer non-toxic beauty and skincare products. I'm doing a lot right now and I do want to continue making YouTube videos as often as I can, but at this point I'm not promising to upload like three times a week. I put a lot of pressure on myself and it's tough when you don't have the full capacity that you know that you will have eventually when, you know, as I'm getting my health back and con continuing to make more progress. So I'm having to have a grace for myself right now, even though I love to be making all kinds of crazy YouTube videos. It'll come. So as you guys know, you clicked on this YouTube video. This is a Q&A and I love getting to do this because it gets me to talk about all kinds of things I wouldn't normally talk about. So okay, jumping into a question that I think is a bit of a fun one and I think it's kind of hard for me to answer too. Someone asked, what's my favorite aspect of being married young and are there any aspects of being single that I miss? So for those of you who don't know, my husband and I got married when I was 20 and he was 21. So yeah, I guess we kind of were babies. <laughs> but it's funny when I think about that time when we got married, I don't really think about our age that much. I don't know, I don't think that much about the young aspect. I think just very quickly when we got married, I just realized I mean, obviously I was excited to get married, but it was even better than I expected, honestly. I just remember telling everyone, like, marriage is the best. It just makes me so sad that so many people speak, honestly, a lot of people speak negatively about marriage. And my husband and I talk a lot about how, yes, life is hard, but marriage doesn't have to be hard. So maybe my favorite part when we first got married, I just was so thankful to have his support. When I first got really, really sick, I got sick right before our wedding. Uh, so just having my best friend to be with me through the ups and downs of all of that, I think is very significant and really special. I think it's really grown us together in a really in a really unique way. So I'm really glad we got married when we did. We love being married. Still to this day, our marriage is super healthy and amazing. But when people ask me if I recommend getting married young, I really tell them it totally depends. It depends on where both of you are at in life. I think you just need to seek wisdom to see if that's the right next step for you. For my husband and I, our dating relationship was really smooth. We were both working full time, both out of the house. We both weren't in debt at all. We both had savings. You know, there really was any aspect like oh well we need to wait until we're out of school or something until we get married I don't know it just made sense for us and I can't imagine life without him so I really don't miss being single when you ask if there are any aspects that I miss of being single I really don't think so I think when I do look back at the days when I was single it can be hard for me because those were the days I had energy and I was healthy and you know I've been chronically ill since I got married. But I loved my single years. They were a blast. I tell everyone to try to be successfully single, not being distracted, you know, always 
looking left and right and seeing if there's, you know, a potential mate around. I really just tried to live my single years as best as I can. And so then when I would end up married, I could live my married years as best as I can. I don't know if that's a good answer, but it's a fun question and a fun thing to process through. Okay, a lot of people ask me about my teeth, which is really funny. It's funny because I don't think my teeth are like particularly white. I think the camera, since most people don't know me in real life, but they know me on camera. I mean, right now I've got this ring light that definitely is likely making my teeth look whiter, but I don't know, I think my teeth are pretty good. <laughs> Oh yeah, and someone else asked what like my routine is for my teeth, and they said they know that I oil pull. Really, right now, I brush my teeth probably twice a day, maybe sometimes three times a day. I just, like a couple days ago, tried out the Young Living Thieves Whitening Toothpaste, you know, a non-toxic safe toothpaste. I don't know, I kind of felt like I saw a difference using that even in the first couple times, but that's really new. I use the Thieves mouthwash. Oftentimes I was just using the normal Thieves toothpaste before. Thieves is like the line within Young Living. I've used it for a really long time. Um, I wear my retainer every day. I guess that's part of my teeth routine, but nothing special. So I'm excited to answer some of your kind of health questions. I just want to place a disclaimer here that I am not a doctor. I don't treat or diagnose disease. I am a nutritionist and I do have lots of training for helping people with nutritional therapy and then of course lifestyle and supplemental support to help them make progress in their health. So none of this is medical advice. This is all for informational educational purposes only. Okay, I love this question and I honestly would like to do a whole video on it eventually. And the question is, why is hydrochloric acid, also known as HCL, also known as stomach acid, why is it important and what could cause someone to not have enough? So HCL is absolutely crucial for digestion. Our stomachs need to be very, very acidic in order to break down proteins properly. Our stomach pH should be between 1.5 and 3. That is ridiculously acidic. That should, like if you magically got it out of your body, it should be able to burn a hole in the carpet. If you don't have enough hydrochloric acid, whenever you consume food, it's not gonna go well. You're not going to digest the food in the way that you're meant to. Those carbohydrates, they're gonna ferment in your gut. The, the proteins, they're going to uh, putrefy, putrefy. I always say it wrong the first time, putrefy. And then the fats will reincidify. Just that alone, not having enough hydrochloric acid, that can lead to, you know, that food just not digesting properly. It'll poke little holes in the stomach lining, leading to intestinal permeability or leaky gut. And when those foods get out into your bloodstream, your immune system's like, that's not supposed to be there and it will cause an immune response. So there's a lot that can happen if you don't have enough hydrochloric acid. And I really should do a video on this because acid reflux and GERD is so, so common. And most of the time, the vast majority of the time, people actually don't have enough stomach acid with GERD and acid reflux. When typically we're told we have too much stomach acid, that is actually rarely the case. So low HCL can be caused by a lot of different things. It could just be caused by stress, by being really sympathetic dominant. For a lot of people, it can be because of nutrient deficiencies. Your body makes HCL from nutrients like zinc, thiamine, B12. Those are crucial to be able to to be able to have enough stomach acid. It can be from excess alcohol consumption. It could be from just over consumption of food in general. Of course, antacid use, excess sugar consumption. There's a lot of different things that can contribute. So for some people, it's gonna be really important to work with a practitioner to help you get to the root cause of why you don't have enough stomach acid. What to do about thyroid and hormonal imbalances and extremely heavy periods. So honestly, you, it sounds like you do have a lot of different things going on there. So I hope you're working with a good practitioner. A nutritional therapy practitioner could be a great person to work with, possibly someone like a functional medicine doctor or a naturopath. If you can find an MD or even an endocrinologist that will help you get to the root cause, someone like that is also great. But when I hear that, the thing that really stands out are those excessively heavy periods and that is very very commonly due to 
estrogen dominance. So if I were working with you one-on-one, -on -one, I could give you a lot more specific recommendations. Of course, do the basic things, eat a whole food nutrient-dense properly prepared diet, drink enough water, get enough sleep, exercise. But then there are other things that you can do to support this. You've got to really support detoxification. There are a lot of xenoestrogens in the environment, a lot of things that mimic estrogen and can lead to estrogen dominance in our body. So that's why choosing safer products is so important and that's why that's why I talk about that all the time. So I would definitely switch over your household products, your cleaning products, your makeup and skincare products to ones that use safe ingredients that don't have those xenoestrogens in it. So really, that's the first step of detoxification is eliminating toxins in your environment. Then supporting your liver, that's eating adequate amounts of protein specifically animal proteins because of the bioavailable amino acids that are in them. Um, the protein will also give you B vitamins, which is really crucial to detoxification. I would likely eat more cruciferous vegetables, things like broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, things like that, that can really help in aiding in um, detoxifying excess estrogen. There's definitely a lot more to what I would likely recommend to someone dealing with issues like that, but I definitely would start with those things. Best budget-friendly water filter pitcher or system. So I'll just share what I'm doing right now. That's, I think, pretty budget-friendly. I, you know, bought a big jug that I take to my local natural grocers. I know Whole Foods has this as well, probably Sprouts and others. And I just fill up my big tank of water with the reverse osmosis machine at the grocery store. And reverse osmosis, I think, is a great way to filter water. And then I just add minerals in it because in the filtration process, it loses a lot of minerals. I use like trace mineral drops from like trace minerals research. And yeah, it's like 25 cents a gallon and I just fill it up couple times a week and it's been working great for us. Other than that, like what I would like to do next would either be purchase a Berkey and get the fluoride add-on to also filter out fluoride or I haven't looked into a lot of whole house filtration systems but that would be amazing to do that one day. <laughs> I'll certainly share when I get there I guess. But yeah, filtered water guys, that's, that's a big one. I'm gonna tell all my clients to drink clean sources of water that are properly filtered, very, very, very preferably not in plastic, even if it's BPA free. Where can I find a functional medicine doctor? Typically, I recommend going to Institute for Functional Medicine website. The website is ifm.org, and if you just Google search that, IFM, find a practitioner. I will link it in the bio, but it's that easy to find. That's usually where I send people. That's where I found my amazing functional medicine practitioner, and I think that's a good place to look. People often tell me, hey, I can't find a good practitioner in my area, and I just love in this day and age, you can work with people from all over the world. I also work with a naturopath. I'm pretty sure she lives in Georgia and I'm in Oklahoma and you know, we just do it online and it's great. Okay, so kind of connected to the question about finding a functional medicine doctor, someone asked if I have any advice for someone not getting better with a functional doctor and diet and what else to look for. So I would potentially say a couple things. Obviously it's going to depend based on the full context of the situation. You know, sometimes I see people, they expect healing to come quicker. They hope to have more of a, like a quick fix, something that's really gonna make a difference really fast when that's not always going to be the case. In some situations, I would say you really just need to stick with it and your consistency over time, that's going to lead to the results. Now, in other cases, you know, there are a lot of amazing functional medicine doctors out there. Some that are probably great in areas, but they may not be looking at certain things that they should specifically for your case. For example, there's still a lot of, I mean, tons of doctors and a lot of functional medicine practitioners 
that they're still not looking into mold illness, mold toxicity, chronic inflammatory response syndrome or they may not be a Lyme literate, a Lyme literate practitioner. They may not really know much about chronic Epstein-Barr virus. You know, it's important that you do your own research and be your own advocate, and you may need to really just be coming to your doctor with, with more questions, with resources, with studies you've been reading. You really, I mean, you've gotta do the work as the patient, but it may be very likely that it's time to pivot and try something and some, working with someone completely different. I think that is often totally fine. You do have to remember that you are in charge, you are paying this person, so you can fire them and you can move on to somebody else. So listening to my body, I should probably stop in just a minute. And there are so many good questions. I definitely want to do a part two and answer more, but I want to sit in with more of like a, I guess a serious question. The question is, how do you find purpose when living with illness that so greatly impacts everyday life? So first I just want to recognize that chronic illness is ridiculously, incredibly frustrating and at times can be really discouraging and disheartening. And I think that I've learned to really have hope and really be positive about it on most days, but I totally have moments where I'm just frustrated and and I think that that's healthy to feel that because it's it's kind of part of the mourning process. What breaks my heart is when I see people dealing with chronic illness really just feel defeated. Defeated in a lot of aspects. Defeated not feeling like they can heal and can make progress but also feeling like they're losing their purpose to make a difference here on this earth and I really felt that for a while when I first left my job, I was a youth pastor at my church and I felt like I had so much purpose and so much potential and I loved what I was doing and I wanted to do it for the rest of my life. And then it was like, I am 21 years old and I'm sick at home and it's horrible. Like, what am I supposed to do? I can barely go to the grocery store, let alone help people. And, and many of you know the story, that's what led me to YouTube and is starting to be more vulnerable and transparent, which was a huge step for me to be this kind of boldly open about my life and my health. And it's pretty incredible to see how God's used it, how I've been able to really reach a lot of people. It's crazy how many people, I mean, truly, I get emails from people who find my videos on the brain retraining or on, you know, just the paleo diet. And they tell me, they email me about the progress that they made, how they, you know, they've come so far because of this. And it's just crazy. I'm like, how cool that I, I get just me sharing, me talking about what's going on. I, I get to be a part of that. Me choosing to embrace and choosing to, you know, trying to find purpose in the midst of pain. It's led to so many good things. And I don't want to make it sound like, oh, wow, look what I have been able to do. I, I believe that all of us were called to make the world better. I don't believe that trials and tribulations should hold us back from doing what we can to serve, to lead, to, to make an impact. So I know still with all of that, it, it's hard when your life is so impacted. I know some people, they're pretty much bed bound and not everyone is called to make a YouTube channel and to share their life publicly. That is not what it has to be. That's just really what I felt compelled to do. And you know, then do YouTube and nutritional therapy and all the things after that. So if you're going through something like this, you just gotta start with something and it could be something really, really small, like texting a bunch of people you rarely talk to and just sending them some encouragement. Just ideas that I have of ways that people can make a difference even if they're dealing with chronic illness or whatever else. Serving at church online. This is one of the first things that I jumped into when I had to leave my job is I started uh, serving on the host team uh, at a Wednesday afternoon service at our church. So I've got to be a, a part of just incredible life change serving in that way. I personally am biased towards social media. I think starting a blog and Instagram, a YouTube channel and sharing your story, sharing your testimony. I think that's really impactful in a way to make a difference. And I just think you can't let your symptoms hold you back, even though being super straight up about it, yeah, they are gonna hold you back in some ways. And I believe that they don't have to forever. That's a whole other tangent. But I'm just tired of people thinking they have to get to the end of their 
of their struggle to, to share and make a difference. Find some way to share and connect. Find someone else dealing with something with similar issues and and grow together. Maybe that thing that the doctor said was totally safe and effective and that led to your chronic chronic health issues, maybe it's time to start talking to people about that. Maybe you've learned these incredible lessons because of what you're going through and you need to write a book. You don't have to work full time on it. You've got to have grace for yourself, but then also do as you can. And I know when you start just doing something to make a difference, to you know, find that thing that gives you purpose in life again, even when you're struggling with health issues that hold you back, it makes life so much better. You will have more joy because serving people makes you better and then of course it makes others better too you know I know not everyone here watching is a follower of Christ but if you are I would just encourage you to pray and ask God what is that thing that I need to do to find purpose in the midst of my trial right now and then if you don't pray you know maybe talk to someone just journal think about it and I believe you'll figure out what that thing is that you need to do I knew I needed to find something and I prayed about it and then clearly one night I could not stop thinking about YouTube and I hated being on camera and I was like, this is weird, but I think I'm supposed to do it. Okay, I do need the rest for going to dinner tonight. So thank you guys so much for watching. This is probably way longer than I even realize and it's only a few questions, but I think we covered some good stuff. And I'm excited to do more because I just like talking about random topics. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more. Hit the notification bell if you want to make sure you never miss a video because the descriptions really don't matter anymore because YouTube is kind of dumb right now. But I will see you in the next video. Bye!